Okay, so uh, we are still uh, discussing the Master in Shiny uh, a book uh, from the author, uh, Dr. Ali Wicken. And this is chapter 20. And as we can see, this is a chapter within the best practices uh, section of this book. We already cover uh, some of the general guidelines, uh, the best practices that we should be doing uh, when we develop uh, a, a Shiny app. Then we discuss uh, how to build functions to modularize our Shiny app instead of one big you know, uh, script. Uh, then we talk about shiny models, and now we are going to get that shiny model, module into a package, okay? So one of the prerequisites for this uh, chapter is that you have to have, you should have a knowledge or a basic understanding of how to create a package in R, okay? Because there is a definitely, you know, peculiar structure about this pa uh, about it in our package. So uh, I did, uh, uh, you know, a, co a couple of months ago, I did a presentation on another book club uh, discussing the book by Bruno Rodriguez called Reproducible uh, Data Pipelines Using R. And one of the chapters, the chapter that I was uh, discussing was uh, how to, you know, get all these uh, data pipelines, functions, and everything into a package for uh, distribution and sharing. So the main reason on why you want to build a package, uh, either uh, a bunch of functions that you have that you want to you know, uh, keep it uh, reproducible, or uh, doing a shiny app, is that the, the package in, in itself is the fundamental unit of how you share code in the R universe, okay? And what a package really uh, uh, consists of bundles together is mainly code, it bundles data, documentation, and the test. And the tests are very important because if you want, you know, if you want to submit your package to CRAN, Okay, the comprehensive uh, uh, R network where all the packages basically reside, you know, at least the main packages that you usually uh, uh, use. Uh, uh, CRAN uh, requires that you include uh, unit testing in your, you know, in, in your package. Okay, and that's going to be also uh, the topic for the next chapter, chapter 21. But it makes it easier uh, for other users. And if you are, if you have been using R for a while, you know that one of the first things that you do is, uh, you know, load a package, right? You know, uh, dplyr, for example, ggplot2, uh, all those, you know, nice packages that we use for uh, data manipulation, data analysis, etc. So let's see. What is the structure of a package before going back to the, the this chapter 20? So the package is really a collection of uh, directories and files, and they have a peculiar naming and convention. For example, in a package, there's always a file called description in uh, uppercase, okay? And you will see you know, what a description is, 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 is like. Then you have an R, uh, directory where usually all the code that you're writing for that package resides in R. Then there's a directory for tests. There's a directory called man, manuals for documentation. There's a directory for the vignettes, okay, that gives you examples on how to use the package and the functions that are included in the package. And also you can have a directory called data which includes some of the data sets that you can use for the vignettes and the examples in your package. And there's another one called namespace, which organizes which are the dependencies that you need uh, for your package to function properly, okay? So with that introduction, then let's go now to discussing the chapter, okay? So the purpose of this chapter 
what I, what I'm going to do is that we are going to create a shiny app, okay? Uh, create the function, create the modules, and then also create the skeleton of that, you know, uh, a package that shiny, the shiny app is going to be residing on. So one of the things that you need to do, uh, you know, following the, the recipe of this chapter is to create a description in the root directory of your app. I already did this, okay? Uh, you know, I'm not going to repeat it and just talk about, you know, the process, but this is, you know, uh, an example of a description that is the, is the main introduction to what the package uh, basically is about, okay? So in the description, you will have the name of the package. In this case, it's Birdstones. Uh, the title is what the package does, okay? The scripted title. And in this case, the Shiny app that we're going to develop is that for every month of the year, there is a Birdstone associated with that month. So we want to create an app that when we choose the month, maybe our birth month, right? Then it's going to, uh, you know, uh, look up in a in a in a in a file. It's going to look up for the birthstone corresponding to that month. All right. Then when you have the version of if your package, you have the authors. In this case, you know, it took when I created the the description file, it took the information from my R profile dot R profile. Okay. Uh, you have license, uh, usually, you know, you can get in the weeds about the license, but usually you use a MIT license or a JPL3 license. And there's a discussion in that, you know, in, uh, in, in Hadley's uh, package, uh, you know, uh, our package book. Uh, the encoding, uh, what are you using to uh, document your package, which is the R oxygen, right, uh, package. Uh, what it what is the, the dependencies and in this case it's just the R the base R uh, uh, dependency and if the lazy data is true you know to uh, uh, ingest that data okay okay so let's see Ray, yeah I was just to point what? out that mm -hmm. yeah you, you want you don't have any problem if people make money with your code, you can use the mid license. So people for right. companies can use your code. Mm -hmm. If you have problems with your code being, yeah, not, not used, modify and sell. You know, that's the point. Modify right. and sell. Uh, you can use the the GLP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for GPL, the yeah. free so Yeah, the GLPM. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Need a license so people cannot modify because well something interesting even though if you see a package with that license if you are not modifying the the, the call and you're just using the package as an api you know mm -hmm. and you can you can integrate in your products without any problem right so yeah yeah the, no... the, the license is going to inform you know what 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 you can use this for okay and if I modify it, if I'm if I'm allowed to do it, uh, there's a good discussion precisely in the Bruno uh, Rodriguez book, in the in 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 the in the in that that chapter that I discuss in chapter eleven. Mm -hmm. There's a good discussion that he does on on licenses, okay. And he prefers yeah. I think he prefers the GPL license, okay. if I remember, not not mm -hmm. the MIT. The MIT is too is too broad, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, but but uh, there's you know. There's all, all kinds of licenses are, are around, you know, so. Okay, so we we already know more or less, you know, how to how to build a simple uh, Shiny app, right? You know, you we, we know that it has a, a UI, it has a server. Uh, you're going in the UI, you're going to lay out, you know, how is you going to look in, in the, you know, in, in the web page. And then the server is going to do, you know, the the the, the worker function, you know, to, to uh, uh, create a plot or create a manipulation or create a table, whatever. So we know already that. And this is what uh, the author is trying to tell us. But in order to, you know, include it into a package, remember that package, we usually what you do is that you, you know, create a collection of functions uh, uh, there that they work in tandem to achieve uh, a particular result. So 
the 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 gist of this uh chapter is that you have to convert that shiny app into a function all right and that's why this is the structure that we are going to be using now instead of just the the library shiny the ui the server and the shiny app okay you know invoking the ui and the server now we are going to package it into a function and we're going to you know name it uh, we can name it my app, or you can name it, you know, whatever it, it is convenient for you. Okay. So, for example, let's say that you are using the dplyr, right? The dplyr uh, package. Well, a function that you can use there is called distinct, right? So, what distinct does is that it takes from the data frame, you know, the, the input of the data frame, uh, it takes a column or various columns, and then it gives you the unique values of that particular column. And that's what this thing, you know, uh, you know, the, the, uh, you know uh, the result of this thing within the dplyr package. Just an example of, you know, to relate to this, okay? So how do I create this description here? Okay, because this is already, is already uh, you know, done. Well, you you use, use this, right? They use this package. They're going to use usually two packages here. Use this and dev tools, right? So in use this, you have use description to create, I says they are description file. And in many cases, you will never need to look at this file once you once you created it. Okay. Only when you're developing that you have to, you know, uh, you know, if, if you're creating an update, you have to revise the version and all that. But then you know you're going to use other other uh, other other functions. Okay, and then the other function that you're going to use, okay, to create this project, because this is a project here. I don't know if you can see uh, here, Burstones, right? This is the project uh, that I create, that, that it was created in, in our studio uh, using this. Use this and use our studio. And it's going to create within that, that, uh, that directory, Burstones, is going to create a, a file core burstones dot r proj, but then also is going to set up the working directory uh, starting with that folder that you're mentioning in that package, which is called burstones. Okay. And then you restart the, the R studio and reopen your, your project. So now when you have that, when you have this deploy already and, and you create this description, then you can run what is called dev tools Remember, you're going to use use this and dev tools, basically. Dev tools to load all and load all the package code and data. This means that you can now remove any calls to source since load all automatic sources all scripts uh, ending in dot .r, you know, the extension dot .r files into R. And also you're going to be, you know, using the use this, use data with my data set to create that data folder that you see here. Okay, the data folder here that it uh, it creates what is called an RDA uh, a file, which is yeah, a binary. The, the you know is is like a serialization of this uh, you know uh, CSV file. Okay. Yeah, it's like so a binary file, so Both you don't, you won't need to guess the column right. type of each of your columns, so it's faster. Exactly. Okay. So uh, with that. Uh, you have already, you have the R folder and you have also the data, okay? Already that you're going to be using to uh, power your your function. Okay, so in this, this is the, 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 the development of this app, right? Uh, you know, and we have seen this already uh, in the, in, uh, you know, when you invoke the library Shiny, then you're going to, you know, uh, do your UI, which is going to be the monthly feedback, right? With the text output, uh, ID and feedback. And then you're going to create this month uh, feedback server, okay? Which is, is going to be mod modularized eventually. Then you are going to call the Stones uh, 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 data set, right? You're going to call the Burstones, uh, SV data set, which is going to be called Stones. And then you're going to create this UI and this server, 
right? And that's this is going to be what is powering this this shiny. Uh, you get the months, right? You know, you get the vector of the months. You get again the UI and the server. And if you run this, you're going to get something like this. I'm going to run the, you know, I'm going to go ahead and run the the month app. Okay, but this is where you get, you know, when you run that. Okay, you pick up the month, uh, Angel. Well, which month is your birth? Uh, May. Birth month? May. Okay, May. So let's see what is your birthstone. Uh, your birthstone is emerald. Okay, uh, yeah, nice. Uh, let's try mine. Okay, I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> uh, December. Okay, I'm one of the last ones. <laughs> uh the birthstone here is tanzanite okay nice so this is what you get basically from this you know running this uh you know this script right but still we haven't you know uh made the necessary changes to convert this script into you know the 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 function that i'm running uh, with the package okay so for that we're going to use our knowledge to modularize uh, this shiny in you know, this shiny script into different components because that is going to be a key to do our unit testing, right? You know, when you're doing the unit testing, you need to have functions that only do a particular, you know, that have a particular result. So you can then uh, test the integrity and the type of that out, all right? So we're going to uh, create the month feedback uh, script dot r, which is right here. Okay, month feedback. You can see it right here. Okay, within the r uh, directory, and then uh, you're going to get also the birthstone, right? The birthstone r uh, script, which is the basically the UI and the server. So what we did was decouple, right? Decouple this part this part a section of the script from the ui and the server all right and it's going to be you know you're going to see the benefit when we do the testing all right so you create those two uh, uh scripts and then then leaves me the following app okay so in the following app which is calling the birthstones and the monthly feedback uh you get this okay you get the month app which is the function they're going to create to call the shiny app. You get the, the, the months, you get the UI, you get the server, and then you call from each of these uh, you know, sections, you call, right, the scripts that I was you know, talking, talking about, okay? So let me see what happens here. Okay, so now in this section, you are going to then you know, create that package. And as I told you, you know, first you're going to run the use description, right? Uh, to create the description. As an option, you can convert the bare stones, which I did, uh, to a data set by running this use data stones, which stones have to be already uh, a data set from the bare stones that the, the, the it is. Okay. And uh, you can see the final product, right? Which is something similar to what we have here. Uh, you can see it in 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 the GitHub, uh, you know that the Hadley has, which is this one, okay, where you have you know the you have the the, the scripts, right? The app, the birthstones, monthly feedback. You have also let me see the data, right? Stones RDA, and then you have the description and namespace, which is the 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 the, the file that has the dependencies. And also you have, for reference, you have also the burst of the original data set and the project file. So this is similar, right? Similar to what we have here. Okay. Any comments? Oh, great. It's, uh, it's I would just point that yeah. you also can save in a package your mm -hmm. raw data in the data raw folder. You create one, right? Yeah, yeah. You can you can do that. Yeah, you yeah. can save it. I, I I just was mimicking, you know, what Hadley did. Yeah, so you could you could compare that, but yeah, I, I've seen it. You know, data uh, underscore raw. That that's the original. 
uh, placeholder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. For the for the for the original data sets. Good, good point. Okay, so why bother, right? Why, why, why do you want to you know expend that extra work? Well, the most important benefit is a new workflow that makes it easier accurately to reload all app code and relaunch the app. All those steps that you did here, for example, okay, all these steps are already, uh, you know, are already uh, uh, relaunch when you call the the app, the, the, the package, okay? You know, when you install the package, everything gets, you know, available to you. So that minimizes uh, errors and also, mini, uh, you know, optimizes time. Okay, to to reproduce your original, uh, you know, your your original uh, uh, development. Okay, so putting your app in the code structures your, unlocks a new workflow. So now, uh, what I did here, I don't know if you can see it here, right? Uh, when I opened that project, the bare stones, I already had this structure uh, around here. I just had to use Dev Tools load all. So when I do that, load all, that means that it loads the, the data set, okay? And it also loads all the functions that are in that R, R folder. So what I have to do only is call the month app, right? The month app, and then run my Shani app. V very elegant, okay? Okay, so. Yes. Yeah, I mean, once you get the you know the, the the flow you know you practice and 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 you get used to this uh this is great okay because uh you know and 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 I was thinking about you know when I was doing this uh this exercise because I never done it I never you know done you know putting a shiny uh app into a package okay it was the first time but then I said wow you know how how you know how how easy and convenient it is because for example, if you compare this with the Python, uh, you know, uh, uh, ecosystem, one of the headaches that you're going to get when you start, you know, working with Python is to get that virtual environment, you know, set up, all right? And the problem is that sometimes you get conflicts between the libraries that you are, you are installing. Here, you don't have that problem because you already have said what are the dependencies and what are the versions of those dependencies. So if you test this and CRAN is going to tell you, okay, when you, you know, sub submit it to CRAN, it's going to tell you, hey, you know, you have this problem in this dependency, you have to do something with it. So it forces you, right, to make your package uh, uh, compatible, compatible with all the packages that are at there if you are going to use dependencies. One of the things that uh, I, I, you know, I attended a webinar of uh, a Hadley uh, uh, talking about, uh, pro, uh, you know, doing production in, in R. And he said that one of the things that you should strive is to minimize the, the dependency of the packages, okay? If you can use, and, 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 it, and it came from him, I, I was surprised, it came from him because he's the author of the plier package, he's the author of tidyverse and all that, but he says, if you can stick at least on the, you know, in 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 the in the first uh, packages that you do, if you can stick with base R, you shouldn't have any any problems with submitting your package to CRAN. Okay, because base R basically has most of the tools that you need to uh, submit it to CRAN. Now, when you get a little more, you know, uh, seasoned, then you can start, you know, adding more dependencies, you know, more stuff. But when you are, you know, uh, uh, doing this for the first, second, or third time, it's better to try to minimize those dependencies because CRAN is going to tell you. It's not going to, you know, give you the 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 the, the, the okay. It's going to tell you that you need to, you know, do something with it. Okay, if there is a conflict there, something that in Python, it, uh, you know, unfortunately doesn't happen. All right, so keep that in mind. You know, if you <laughs> if you are dealing with Python. Uh, as as uh, 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 as as I'm dealing with it. <laughs> yeah, it's like a crime is like the police in R. So yeah. 
Yeah, I know. Hey. I mean, I mean, so sometimes you know, people say it's a pain. You know, uh, it, it takes time and all that. But hey, you know, it's worth it. It's worth it because when you have a wild west, like in others, in other uh, ecosystems, uh, you have you know ju just to get that virtual environment set it up, it takes you a lot of time. Okay, it, it takes you know it, it creates a lot of friction that you don't. Yeah, if you pick yeah. everything for crown, you know that all is going to yeah. work. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that that that's the guarantee. Okay, that, that that that's the guarantee. You know, if the package is there, you know, usually, you know, you shouldn't have any problems. I think with dependencies, maybe there will be some bugs there. Yeah, okay? of course. Maybe there yeah. will be some bugs that Cran, you know, couldn't catch. But that's another that's another problem, and you can have, you know, you can send an issue, you know, to the to the developer and say, hey, you know, I'm having this problem with this. Okay. Or and use a prior version. Okay. Use RBM. Use pack. You know, to to right. Right. Yeah, there are ways to. But, but at least around. in terms of dependencies, I've never, uh, you know, have found that it says, "Oh, there's a conflict," you know, with this. Never. In, in, I in, I don't know that in R. That's yeah. right. I don't know that. <laughs> you told know, me that yeah. you have no, no, problems that in Python. Let, let Let me tell you, when you go to Python, <laughs> oh man, you know, you're in a different world. World. <laughs> Dependency okay. header. I know. Oh, I yeah. know that when you are setting a the Docker environment. You know, the uh, local dependencies from for mm -hmm. like because installing R using a Mac or using a Windows computer is really easy. When you go right. to Linux, Linux, yeah, you you need to deal with with system dependencies. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And let me tell you, Docker. Uh, you know, if if you know what you're doing with Docker, does a pretty good job. Okay, to try to uh, you know, if if it's running, you know, in your environment. Doc will, Docker will re, re, replicate that environment, okay? So it's something that is, you know, is good. But usually, you know, you have to also know about Docker, know about, you know, doing images and et cetera. So that is an, it's another step that you have to, you know, you have to execute. Yeah. But yeah, do, Docker helps. Definitely Docker helps. And also there's another, you know, a, a, another uh, framework that is, uh, I, I think it's called Poetry. Poetry in Python that also, it tries to minimize, you know, that type of, of conflict, but but they happen, you know. It's it's uh, and and, it, and it's interesting because, for example, there are two packages. For example, in R, right? In R, you have dplyr, right? You have ggplot. Those are the the go to packages, at least to start a data analysis and you know visualization. Well, in Python, the 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 go to libraries are pandas and numpy. <laughs> okay. And you have to be right at the bat. You have to be very careful which version of NumPy, and which version of pandas are compatible. <laughs> oh okay? wow! Not all of them are. Okay, because they are they are being developed independently. You know, they 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 are not communicating to each other. That's the problem. And okay. maybe that's related to be object oriented <laughs> rather than function oriented. Right. Yeah. 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 When you but have a example, function, for, for example, uh, with pandas. Uh, let's say that you know. Uh, let's let's let, let's say uh, you know uh, an example. Pandas, you upload a uh, two point right? You know a version two point and then it says, okay, two point is going to work with NumPy one point five, right? But what happens? You are not going to only use those two libraries. But sometimes maybe you need other libraries, you know, to make your life easier, like stats model. Or maybe uh, you know matplotlib, you know like like ggplot, etc. So what happens when you install those? Then it tries to bump the numpy, you know, to Ooh. the version that they are compatible, not with pandas, okay? And then the conflict starts. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So one thing that you have to do is when you have that package set up, what you have to do is create what is called an environment. Jamo uh, file, yeah. So you can freeze, uh, you know th those versions, okay. And it's always recommendable. You know, when you have your your virtual environment set up and it's working fine, create that file environment uh, YAML or requirements dot dot text, okay. Which is like an RM uh, the log file, yeah, the log file. file. Mm -hmm. it's basically the same thing, okay. It it recreates that uh, that 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 uh, environment. You know, to run then, you know, your package, your functions, etc. And Whoa. then, you know, in, in that in that package, it will tell you, okay, this is the the dependencies that you have, and these are 
the versions that you need. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It sounds terrible. Like, let me tell you, but 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 it's painful. It's painful. No, and, wow. And, and I tell you, I'm 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 doing a, an AI uh, course, you know, in Python, and one of the headaches is uh, getting that virtual environment, you know, set up. <laughs> and and that's something that our users have for normal. You know, you just open your computer and start working, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't think about that. Yeah, yeah. You don't think about it. No, yeah. you can you can go really far away without dealing with dependencies in R. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you still, you know, if you are going to, you know, uh, do do the right thing, and that's what that that book, uh, you know, from Bruno Rodriguez is 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 very valuable. Yeah. That he talks about the RM, and he says, you know, why you should have, you know, with your, you know, with your package, you should have an RM. Okay. At least, well, at least mm -hmm. you can freeze that environment, and the, uh, and in that in that case, you aren't going to have any problems, even if you use packages outside plan. All right. Yeah, you can, you can use packages outside CRAN too, you know. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, but let me tell you, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a trip. It's a trip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay, what we're talking here? Okay, we're talking about you know running the app, uh, do the do the 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 load load all you know dev tools etc. Uh, if you do a lot of package uh, development, says uh, the author, you may want to automatically lose use this with your description instead of the use this uh, description, you know, uh, lo loading the, the use this library. And uh, let me see what else. Uh, and they see ways to find, you know, what, 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 what is the information that is going to the description is going to be set up in your uh, .r profile, okay? And you can run edit.r profile and it will get you a template, a script, where you can then, uh, you know, load your personal information, and then you'll have it for uh, when you create the package. Okay. So let's see. Uh... Yeah, that's that. That file is really useful. So you every time you restart the session, you right. don't need to to reload your yep. your environment. Okay. But usually, I I don't usually commit that. Uh, so I don't I put in git ignore, right? But it's really useful. I also yeah. even put low all in, inside the dot r profile. Okay. Uh, yeah, I usually do that, so okay. I don't need to run love all every time. Okay, so, so I, it runs, you know, right when it starts the the environment. The session, so I can start working. Yeah. You know, uh, when it doesn't work, in, sometimes when I want to build up the bit the bit edge the bit edge. I just mm -hmm. uh, command uh, command that that part of code, and then, but most of the time I have low or in the during <laughs> the study session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Okay. So th th this section is about basically about sharing, you know, uh, your your package. So you know, if 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 you if you go to the next step of uh, you know submitting to CRAN uh, your package. Then you know, Cran will automatically you know distribute it, you know, like a you know a, 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 when when you call the library, right? The library, uh, the player, etc. You know, it's coming from you know, it's, it's it, 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 when you install the package, it's coming from Cran. Okay, so you can you can do that, but also uh, you can do shinyapps.io, which is a tool uh, provided you know to to uh, share uh, shiny apps and also our Studio Connect. Okay. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, some extra steps here. Okay. Uh, there are two common extra steps. You may take beyond the basics, make it easy to deploy your package and turn it into a real uh, uh, package, right? Uh, deploying your app, package load, right? Doing the package load. And then, you know, you call your, your app. And you use this, use this package shiny, use this package load, et cetera, you know, to, uh, you know, get that functionality. Um, the other thing is about the R command check. Okay. Uh, this, what, what, we, what we have created is a minimal package, right? So, uh, uh, you know, you don't see here, right? You don't see here, for example, namespace, you don't see the vignettes, you don't see the manual, etc. Uh, that's, you know, more in depth when you create the whole, you know, the whole package when you use R oxygen. You use the unit testing, et cetera, to create that. So, you know, that's something that I think it belongs more 
to the you know to to to, to how how to develop a, a package not how to develop a shiny a shiny a shiny app by itself okay so basically that that's it uh if you know how to do a package basically shiny is just one more function <laughs> that you're going to create and in rom yeah exactly and what you have to do is basically use the knowledge that we uh, gather in chapter 19 right uh you know modularize you know your your work so then you you are prepared to do the unit testing a little bit more efficient. Because if not, then you're going to have this long script and then you have to, you know, uh, have, you know, some uh, some work in terms of how, how we're going to do your your your, your unit testing. Yeah, you don't, you won't have to, to automate, you know, and even right. insulate your, your unit testing. <laughs> exactly. exactly. One test of, oh, the, runs, the, the app opens is not enough. <laughs> Okay, so one more thing that I wanted to, you know, discuss here is that uh, 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 Bruno, uh, in that chapter, chapter 11 of, of his book, uh, he introduces what is called uh, Fusen, okay? And Fusen, what it does is that it's, a, it's basically a wrapper, okay, to create a package from a markdown file, all right? Instead of going through the steps, right, you know, of... Uh, use description, create package, uh, you know, all that. What you're going to do is use Fusen with a markdown file, but the markdown file has to be, you know, in a certain way, of course, you know, it cannot be any markdown file, you know, it's going to, it's going to create uh, two, two markdown files, but then in there, you're going to do some, you know, some manipulations. You have to name your functions, et cetera. So then Fusen, what it does is that it takes that markdown file and then creates the the folders. It creates the the description file, the namespace file, and then depending on the chunks, is going to get okay. This is a script. Is going to the R, you know, uh, uh, folder. This is a test. You are you are going to the test folder. Uh, this is an example. You are going to the vignettes. So in the markdown, you know, when you label your chunk codes, right? Your your code chunks. Uh, you're going to label it in a specific way to tell Fusen where that code choke goes. Okay, so it's, it's kind of interesting. But one caveat that I have is that you you need to learn, uh, you know, first how to do a package. Because Fusen, you know, uh, uh, internally is doing that work for you. So if you know how to do all these steps or how to create a package, you know, following... Uh, you know, creating packet uh, the R package handbook uh, book by 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 the same author, Kali Wiccan. Uh, you can then understand what Fusen is doing, and then you can tailor it, you know, to your needs. But it's an interesting, uh, you know, it's there is an interesting approach. It's out there, and then there's another one which is called Leader. I just found out this in my YouTube, uh, you know, uh, channel. You know, it, it it came as a recommendation. And there's there's this uh I'm going to share in the in the in the chat, okay? Uh it tells you more or less you know how to do it and it's and it's more or less the same uh uh the same philosophy as Fusen. So it has certain wrappers that are going to help you uh uh create a package uh much faster than you know doing it the, the traditional way. Okay. Yeah, so, I, I really, I really love Fusen. Uh, you know, I have been, I, yeah, I use Fusen in my personal project. Okay, uh, good, for taxi drivers. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't like like the idea to have functions and the vintage together. You know, you can do it good. with Fusion, but I don't like it. I really prefer <laughs> to have mm -hmm. my functions. <laughs> in different armor files, uh, 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 armor down files, but you know the the point of having declare a function, mm -hmm. then declare the, the sample, and then declare the the test mm -hmm. for a single function. I love it. You know, like it's like when you have the structure of the package to go to one folder to go to the function, then create another right. for the test, and then another uh, and place the the sample in a as part of the Rochester test, 
Mm -hmm. I don't like, you know, to ask the sample the rushing them because it's hard to run, you know. Yeah. And you have a a chunk, so you can run your sample first really easy, and then it takes everything to the further that it needs to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love it. And okay. I, also, you get how to configure your your YAML file because it creates a fusing YAML file. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. You can explain, hey, for example, you usually want to have a, a, a R file that is the name of the package. And you, you say, hey, look at as an exception. So uh, the only, the only, the hardest part to me when I was using Fusion to get a, to get used to is mm -hmm. the point of that when I create a function, and then I want to rename the function. I need to manually go to the R file and mm -hmm. remove that R file. Right. And that that's the only point that I say, oh, this, you know, something that you need to know. When you create a function and then you rename that function, you need mm -hmm. to go to the old version and manually go to the R and then delete that. Delete that, okay. that R file. And then Fusion is going to remove the documentation of that mm -hmm. and bring everything, you know, related to that function. So right. I, I think I, I really love Fusion. Uh, I don't know if I would use it for tiny apps, <laughs> but uh, for creating yeah. general package. I mean, we, you could you could try because uh, mm -hmm. what, what we have seen is that the shiny app is going to be just another function. Yeah, you're, that, that's right. Yeah. That could be... So, yeah, it's easier to, to think about it. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think basically that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, great shot, great representation, Ricardo. Thank you, thank you. So, so see you next week. <laughs> let me let me do the end first. <laughs>